Hello, this is Steve Potasik, Superintendent, Jacksonville School District 117. Before I begin today's presentation, I just want to say today is May 12th, 2021, and I cannot thank the community, the staff, the students enough for the successful year we have had dealing with COVID. It has been a great year, excited about there being a graduation ceremony, and we look forward to next year. There'll be much more of that over the summer. Today's presentation is about phase three of the Vision 117 School Improvement Plan. I gave this presentation last month to the school board at the April board meeting, and I understand it's in the community's best interest to hear this exact same presentation, be able to watch it at your own leisure, and send it off, share it with people, so everybody in this community really can get an understanding of where we are and why we're initiating phase three. So I'm going to go through the PowerPoint presentation I gave to the board. I have made some changes, and those will be highlighted in purple. Those changes are due to the meeting I recently had with PMA, our municipal advisor, to get an accurate idea of exactly how much extra bonding potential we have with the increased online sales tax. But I'll cover all that during the presentation. The title of this presentation is An Initial Discussion on Phase 3. This was given at the April 28th board meeting. In 2013, we launched the Vision 117 process. I wanted to bring back one of the themes that really helped highlight the importance of this process by saying we're honoring our past by looking into the future. At one time, Jacksonville was known as the Athens of the West, one of the most cutting edge, educationally progressive and advanced cities anywhere in the country. Jacksonville has always been on the forefront of education and placed education first, and that really is what we've been trying to do with the Vision 117 process. And in doing so, we're honoring our proud tradition. I made some disclaimers at the board meeting for the board, and I want to make them now for everyone that's watching this. No decisions that could possibly result in a closure of a school will occur without an extended community engagement process. I want to put your fears at rest. We are not going to go to a board meeting and all of a sudden make a decision to close a school. Let's recap the first two phases of the Vision 117 process. In 2013 into 2014, we had that extensive, very involved community engagement process that culminated in the community's decision to focus first on renovating Jacksonville Middle School. In 2015, we generated $32 million in bond proceeds. We used that money to do that renovation. That cost around 26 to $27 million, so we had excess money. In 2017, we went through another bond sale, generating another $10 million. We used the excess money from the 2015 bond sale and the money generated from the 2017 bond sale to enter into phase two, which is the renovation of Lincoln Elementary and South Elementary. I wanna highlight that all of that money was generated from the sales tax. And I'm pleased to say that phase three of Vision 117 also will not place any extra burden on the property taxpayer. Phase three, what to do next? That is our current discussion. But why discuss phase three now? Based on some new funding sources, and those funding sources have time limitations on them, we are in the rare position to talk about further construction projects. Those that have heard me talk about finances have heard me talk about our lack of a debt service extension base over and over again. But it's incredibly important for the community to understand. One of the most important parts of typical school finance is that districts have a bonding potential. And the most common way they use this are for health life safety bonds. And let me give you an example. If we have a roof that's going to collapse or we have an HVAC that goes, most other school districts are able then to go out and sell some health life safety bonds to generate revenue to pay for those emergency improvements or repairs. Most of the projects that we've been talking about through the middle school, Lincoln, South Elementary, Washington, Murrayville, which we're going to talk about for phase three, would traditionally be able to be covered by health life safety funds. Our district should have access to $55 million in bonding potential through health life safety bonds. But our district is in a very rare situation. When PTEL, more commonly known as tax caps, was passed by Morgan County in the late 90s, that established a limit on our bonding potential to the dollar amount of bonds of debt that was outstanding on the day that was passed. We didn't have any outstanding debt. Therefore, this district since the late 90s has been in a very unique situation 
of having to pay for everything out of savings. It's like running your house without a credit card, without car loans, without student loans, without a home loan, any of those, all out of savings. And that is the primary reason this district was not able to keep up with the necessary repairs and maintenance of its old buildings. When the sales tax passed in November 2014, that provided an alternative revenue source from which we were able to sell bonds and use that revenue source as the payment. Without that funding source, I can't even imagine what state our buildings would be in today. And that's why one of the most important themes of the initial Vision 117 process was to say, doing nothing is not an option. Due to these new rare funding opportunities that have time limits on them, and I'm gonna talk about those funding opportunities in more detail, we are once again in the situation where doing nothing is not an option. So what are these rare funding sources that are making phase three possible? Well, first, since we have to pay everything out of our savings account, we've been saving up money in our fund balances, our savings account, to be able to pay for another building. We have somewhere between seven to nine million dollars that we could take out of our fund balances to put towards a project. The sales tax. Starting January 1st of this year, online sales tax is being tracked down to your actual individual address. Therefore, starting January 1, the district has started to receive that one cent sales tax boost even on online sales. Understanding that the sales tax revenue is really the only way that we can generate enough money to be able to do another building outside of just simply saving enough money to do another building. I have been monthly tracking the sales tax revenue and examining it from year to year, awaiting that time when our sales tax revenue has increased enough to be able to have another bond sale. Here's the tracking file I give to the board each month. These are made available to the public on JSD117.org under board book. Each month we receive a payment generated from a month four months prior. Every May 5th, we receive a payment based upon January sales. For the past five years, the money we've generated from the sales tax on that May 5th payment has been between $164,000 to $167,000. Now, that's a lot of money, but that is going to pay off the bond payment that did the construction projects on the three schools. This year, if you look over at this number right here, we received a check for $206,759.33, a $41,000 increase from the previous year's payment. And that's pretty much a $41,000 increase from each of the five years previous to that. Right away, we investigated and figured out that was due to the online sales tax. This is somewhere around a 25% increase in our sales tax for that month. Based upon this fact, and based upon we are in a time with an incredibly low interest rate. When you're in a period of incredibly low interest rates, a bond issuer, a school district, makes the maximum amount of proceeds on the bond sale. At the April board meeting, I didn't have the dollar amount of a potential bond payment yet. I was guessing somewhere between four and $10 million, and that's why those numbers exist on the presentation. But I have corrected those numbers, and in a really good way. Here's the new updated number. I've crossed off that four to $10 million and put in instead a purple $12 million, potentially up to $13 million. I'm just being conservative. So we've got our fund balances, sales tax bond sale, and now we have ESSER funds. ESSER funds are the federal stimulus dollars, and I'm gonna go into them in more detail in another slide. But we could use up to $3.5 million for one of our major building renovations out of the ESSER fund. Lastly, once again, the state is talking about the school construction grant. We were on the fiscal year 04 list, we should be receiving some money from the state. They've never funded that grant. I don't think it's going to get funded, but there is the possibility that sometime in the future we could get up to $24 million in the state towards another project. But I really don't think with the timing of this, we're going to be able to take that into consideration in phase three. So what is ESSER? It stands for Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief. It's better known as your stimulus dollars, your COVID money. We're getting quite a bit we're getting somewhere in the neighborhood of $15 million. Now around two to $3 million of that, we need to use for direct service with students. But a sizable portion of that, up to $12 million, we can use to improve the air quality in our buildings. It's designed to help us reduce the spread of COVID if that becomes an issue once again in the future. It cannot be used for new construction. 
That's going to come across in several of the other slides later that are about potential new construction options. We have nearly $12 million for our current schools. Here's some of the things we're potentially looking at. We're looking at adding an HVAC system to North. That could be about $2.5 million. Adding further walls and HVAC upgrades to accommodate those walls at Eisenhower could be 2.8, somewhere between 2.5 to $3 million. I don't want to commit to this, and I don't want to get people too excited. This is one of, near the end of our COVID stimulus dollars payment. At the end, we could talk about putting an HVAC system in the bowl to help with the air, air quality in the bowl. That's around $1.8 million. If we do a renovation to an old building, the HVAC portion of that renovation, the air conditioning and the heat, also windows and doors, can come out of that ESSER money. For example, the Washington project, that's around $3.5 million of the project that could come out of that ESSER money. That really allows us to do that project and look at further projects. Here are some challenges that we face in phase three. Now that I have a more accurate picture of how much sales tax money we're going to get, I took out the first one. We have a wide range of potential funding because I'm really not considering the school construction grant as a possible factor in phase three at this time. We must spend ESSER two funds. That's a smaller amount of money by September 23 and ESSER three funds and all bond proceeds by September of 2024. We need to begin a major project at least 18 to 24 months prior to completion. And that is even looking a little longer now because of tremendous construction delays due to COVID. We're also going to have to go through a community engagement process if any of the plans could result in the closure of a school. Therefore, given our time limitations, the rarity of some of these funding opportunities, and our overall district need, it is time to start the dialogue on this important topic that will have an impact on this community's future. So it's time to go over the construction options that I presented to the board. These are separate pieces of a final total package. They're listed in no particular order, and we will investigate other feasible options. First, I want to go over the Washington renovation plan. This is a complete renovation similar to the other three schools. It does include a sizable extension on the north side with a new gym, administrative complex, and an elevator. The entire building will become ADA accessible. That's very important. The expected cost is around 11.1 million. The ESSER funds that we will be able to use for the HVAC system will cover around three and a half million dollars, which will leave the remainder at 7.6 million. We have plans for this project because last year before COVID, it looked like the school construction grant might be funded. And they were talking about getting a shovel ready project ready to go. And given the fact that we have some priority from being on the fiscal year 04 school construction grant list. We were really hoping to get this funded by the school construction grant. But in the meantime, we've calculated up with the ESSER money that we do have that $7.6 million sitting in the fund balance. So we could do this project without the sales tax by using our fund balance and that ESSER money. This is our architect's rendering of what the outside of the school could look like. Now I want to highlight that that 11.1 million right now does not include the drive in front of the school. That would be extra money that is would have to be added on. So when you see that in all these drawings, don't consider that part of the package that I'm presenting to the board right now. It is something we can talk about adding into the project if we have excess funds. But as you look at the school, hopefully you can see my mouse here. That is the original, that's the portion of the school that currently exists. All of this would be the new administrative complex, and the new gym. And you see right here, that's the elevator shaft for the elevator. The exterior of the school two summers ago, we spent $1 million to get all the masonry work done. So the exterior of the school looks much better. It looks really good right now. And this would be done to match that look. Here's the architectural design looking from the top down on the school. You have the older portion of the building all here, which will be fully renovated, stripped down, like to keep some of the tile that's in there, that's beautiful tile work, some of the mate, whatever we can keep that has the historic flavor, we will. But new lockers, electrical, plumbing, uh, lighting, ceilings, all of that will be effectively brand new. And here then is the expansion on the north side. And here's that north side expansion in a closer view. You can see right through here the administrative complex, 
a workroom, multiple offices, beautiful front entrance. There's the elevator and then stairs up to go into the first floor also. A little conference room back here, some extra bathrooms, uh, staff bathrooms through here, and a nice new gym with some storage areas. That entranceway would be turned into some effective educational space. And once again, this will include all new bathrooms. Uh, that The portion of the school that goes from where my mouse is showing on, the original portion of the school, will be effectively new. Also increased parking. I know Washington needs parking tremendously. Here is our architect's rendering of what the inside could look like in that new section. It just doesn't look like the same school. That's an inviting place, just like the Lincoln and South construction projects and the middle school construction projects, that will absolutely help the academic environment for that school and really give a boost for that community. Here's the second floor. This classroom has been turned into an accessible area for the elevator with a little breakout space there. Once again, the rest of it will be all effectively new. Anyone who's been in the basement of Washington understands how absolutely necessary it is to have a renovation and improvements to that location. The gym will be moved to that new expansion and that will allow that area to be turned into a dedicated art room, music room, and some other educational spaces. The cafeteria will be a fully dedicated cafeteria. It won't have to share with classroom space. Downstairs bathrooms, once again, elevator accessibility with some breakout spaces. And wonderful for the staff is this area over here that's currently the staff break room or the staff work room, it will be janitorial storage space. They will have a new space up in the expansion. Now I'm going to go over three Murrayville Woodson options. The first one is just to build a new school down near Murrayville Woodson. It doesn't have to be in Murrayville. Could be all the way up in Woodson, but a new school somewhere in the southern area of our district. The expected cost for the student body that's down there would be around $9.8 million. We cannot use any SR funds for this because it's new construction. That leaves the cost at that $9.8 million. But here's the big problem with this option. Since it would be a new building, it would require a building referendum to be passed by the community. I don't even know if we could get that on for the fall. It might have to wait to the spring. And at this point in time, you're gonna see in all of these options for new buildings, I do not think, and I have to advise the board, that this community is going to pass a referendum to build a new building. And I don't think we can wait for that to happen without making a plan, because if we find out next summer that it failed, that means we're now down to two years before we have to use those funds, and it might not be quick enough. Therefore, this is one of the options in giving it to the board and to the community I do not think is a viable option. Here's another Murrayville Woodson option. Now what this one does is this replaces the oldest sections of the building, the sections built in 1917 and 1951 with new construction. This is considered a renovation. We renovate the other sections to bring them up to that like new status. The expected cost is around 8.2 million. ESSER funds for HVAC, we currently have at zero. We might be able to use some of that for that, but that central building being a new construction, I don't think we're gonna be able to use ESSER funds for it. The remainder would be then 8.2 million. Here's the architect's layout of what this could look like. The orange border right here is currently the footprint of the 1917 and 1951 buildings. They would be demolished, they would be taken down, and then a new single-story building would be built in that location to house all the students from Murrayville Woodson. Since it's all single, single levels, it would be ADA accessible. So this is absolutely an educationally sound decision and one that with the $8.2 million cost, we could complete. The third Murrayville Woodson option is just a modernization of the current existing building. It is not a renovation on scale with our other projects. A lot of this money would be spent on repairs and not on what we would consider upgrades or beautification or greatly increasing the academic environment. The building would not end up being completely ADA accessible. It's not a possibility with the multiple levels of that building. This plan was offered by our architect, but absolutely not recommended. He was very clear. He does not view this as a wise architectural or engineering recommendation. And that sentiment was repeated by the other architect companies that we had worked with with previous projects 
when they asked to investigate all of our district buildings. This would be a $5.5 million cost. Because it would all be within that building, we do think we could use a million to maybe a million and a half of our ESSER funds for the HVAC portion. So it's a three and a half to four million dollar cost would be for this. This is the current existing building and these yellow areas are areas that are would undergo major construction changes to try to get the building to be as ADA accessible as possible. You see those in the second floor here and downstairs in the basement. But once again, not recommended by the architect and it is not going to result in a building being fully ADA accessible. Our south expansion option. This expansion would allow the building to serve both the current south and Murrayville Woodson communities. This would result in the closure of Murrayville Woodson. The expected cost on this is around 5.9 million. ESSER funds for HVAC probably are not gonna be an option since the rest of the building has a new HVAC system. You're only putting it in the new construction part. I don't think we would be eligible to use the ESSER funds. So it would be a $5.9 million project. Here's a rough overview of the project. I am gonna show another slide that focuses on that new component. This would all be new up here. Yes, the playground space would need to be moved. There would have to be extra parking that would be put in, but those are included in the cost. Here's a blow up of that section of the building. It would be designed to house your kindergarten and first grade students. You would have extra bathrooms, third set of bathrooms in South. Do you remember when the school only had one? And you have an office area, work area, and a multi-purpose room to be able to provide some PE or other activities for the students there. That would leave the rest of the building with third, fourth, and fifth grade, and the building would be designed around three classes for each grade level. These are two large projects that I'm gonna give you next. One, they might be outside our cost. They would probably require the school construction grant, and they would require a referendum to pass. This would be the construction of a new elementary school somewhere on the east end of town. The school would house all of the current Washington students and enough South students that are in, the, in Jacksonville above Michigan Avenue to go into that school to open up South enough to take on the Murrayville Woodson students. This would allow for the closure of both Murrayville Woodson and Washington. The expected cost is around 25.7 million. That can greatly change depending upon land acquisition and how we would have to then provide services to the land to allow a school to be built. SR funds are zero since it's a new construction and it would require a building referendum. So we've considered this option, but I am recommending to the board at this point in time that that is not a viable option with the current dollars that we have from ESSER and from the sales tax bond sale. The next option would be a new intermediate school. This would be a new construction at the existing JMS site. It would be attendance centers for grades four and five. Therefore, we would have all the way four through eight housed together at the Jacksonville Middle School location. This would allow the closure of Murrayville, Woodson, and Washington, and we would have then the rest of our elementaries turn into K-3 centers. The expected cost, $26.9 million. Once again, no ESSER funds. We would have to get the school construction grant, and you would have to get a building a bond referendum passed. So what's next? We basically have three different options. We wait on both the sales tax total and the school construction grant total to know the complete total package. If you were to throw the construction grant total into this, you're talking about 50 plus million dollars worth of construction. Or we wait for just the sales tax total before moving forward and we do have that dollar amount now. Or we move forward with the Washington project now based upon our current fund balances and the SR money. I'm gonna go through each of those options in more detail. Should we wait on both? I wish we had the luxury to do that. If we knew the school construction grant money was coming in, the possibilities are tremendous. However, it just doesn't fit with our timing. And I think we'd be waiting on something that one, most likely is not gonna come. Two, if it does come, there are multiple other viable options of what we could do successfully with that money, such as renovate the high school. So it's not a loss if we don't use the school construction grant money. Well, since the board meeting, I have found out what our sales tax dollars will most likely be. And our option two and option three have kind of merged together. I'm just gonna cover those in option three. So the other option really starts with moving forward with the Washington renovation. This has several advantages. First, it will ensure time to meet our ESSER deadlines and our bond sale proceed deadlines in this rather large and extensive construction project. The disadvantage, it does remove the attendance center and the East Elementary options. I wanna highlight two other points. If we receive school construction grant funding in the future, we can launch a phase four and talk about where to spend that money 
in something such as a north renovation or major renovations at Jacksonville High School. We can move forward with Washington and delay the decision on Murrayville Woodson until we've undergone a complete community engagement process. So once again, it comes back to that question, what's next? As early as the next board meeting, which is next week as of this filming, we can decide if we will move forward with the Washington renovation. Once they've made the decision about Washington, I'm going to ask the board if they feel we need to go through a larger community engagement process based on the possible outcomes. Thank you very much for watching. We're in a good position to have substantial money and to be able to talk about renovations or improvements to our buildings, which several of them are extremely old. The board and I are in agreement. I will not bring to the board and they will not act on the closure of any school without there first being a community engagement process. They want to hear from the community and we will go through a process to allow your voice to be heard. Thank you very much.